Hey, hi, and hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, here to talk to you about memes, memes. or a meme in particular that I have been seeing get thrown around on the internet over and over and over. It's been perpetuated for a while now. It's this one over here. Basically me. Ooh, I don't like this mix. Ooh, I would like to enjoy this song, but I can't because the mixing isn't good. Look, there's been a lot of album reviews, a lot of song reviews over the years, and I've done thousands at this point, uh, where, uh, you know, yeah, the, the mix kind of is the biggest problem and most glaring issue on the song, on the record. It's not the performance, it's not the vocals, it's not uh, the songwriting, the melodies, the arrangements, or the instrumental palette, it's the way it sounds. Which is kind of what I want to say in this video to uh, sort of defend this position and kind of put this meme down a peg a little bit. Because in a sense, while I know it sounds like really nerdy and like really dorky to worry about the mix of things, especially when it comes to a piece of music where uh, the appeal is how dumb and visceral and hedonistic it is and how it sounds particularly uh, just really isn't all that important. I get it. I understand. And if you do have an issue genuinely with the mix on a song, I think it is upon you, uh, the opinion haver or uh, the person who's giving the critique, to be specific about what exactly in the mix isn't good or is weak or is unappealing, just so you can't have, you know, these kinds of uh, memes lobbed at you and have your uh, argument delegitimized as a result. But again, what I want to say here is when we talk about mixes. We are talking about the way things literally sound on a song and in the art form of music. What is more important than the sound of the things that you are listening to. And look, there's an argument that things like uh, maybe lyrics or maybe melody or maybe rhythm and song structure should take priority over the significance of the mix in terms of the enjoyability of a track. Those things are definitely important. I talk about those things. I make a big deal about those things all the time. But again, we're talking about an art form that is a sonic art form and the way things sound in the world of music should matter, should matter greatly in my opinion. If the sounds you're generating are not good and they suck and they are displeasurable to the ear or difficult to make out and listen to, then I feel like uh, you should get marked down a little bit. And look, in my opinion, in this very digital age of music, being able to track and arrange music and sounds and instrumentation digitally or mixing it is as important, if not more important, than other basics that we consider to be significant in the world of music. The instrumentation doesn't just fall into place magically, someone's gotta put it the fuck together. If you can't place those basic building blocks together, uh, like in a game of Tetris or something like that, then the music you're making inevitably is going to sound like a slop of shit, mess, shit crap, as I so eloquently put just there. Ignoring bad mixing for me is as dumb and as awful as ignoring a singer being out of tune or a drummer being out of time. Maybe that wasn't as much the case when live music was a more predominant form of music consumption or performing live to tape uh, was more the case when it came to recording music. And if you're going to sit there and tediously assemble a piece of music in the stew by yourself or with a friend, not performing it, but assembling it much in the same way an architect might engineer a building or a structure of some sort, mixing is good and important, okay? okay. So as much as people may make fun of others for uh, caring about mixing on a song, when it's to the point where it's so egregious that it's ruining the quality of the track, people actually care about it. The baby recently had dropped some material where uh, the vocals were riding super high over an almost non-existent, like faint instrumental. <laughs> There, of course, also was the uh, infamous vocal placement of very low in the mix of Nav on Travis Scott's Astro World that the entire internet was like wrecking him over. Let me also say that there is a fair amount of subjectivity to this conversation, like anything else in art and music, because there are a lot of artists who are pretty well known uh, for their unorthodox mixing and production practices, be it all the indie and underground rock that came out of the lo-fi wave of the late 2000s 
2000s or, I don't know, black metal music or Jim O'Rourke. The list goes on. And these artists or genres or movements in music are known for their use of harsh distortion or burying the vocals or the drums or whatever other piece of instrumentation so deep into the mix, it's kind of difficult to hear. Uh, things are purposefully obscured. Psychedelic and drone music often indulges in these practices as well. However, those styles and those genres and those techniques are pretty well established at this point, and it's kind of easy to tell, especially as a longtime music fan, when something is being done intentionally or unintentionally as far as mixing practices go. Over here next to my head is another video you could check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, mixing of forever.